The statement made by President Mohamed Buhari that says that 90% of the victims of Boko Haram insurgents are Muslims is causing a little back and forth as some religious societies are having a bickering over the declaration. Now, the Christian Association of Nigeria can had previously rebutted the claim, but then the Nigerian Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, the NSCIA, hit back at Khan over its response. However, Khan insisted that the NSCIA could not exonerate Boko Haram as an Islamic organization. Now, joining me still to discuss this on Plus Politics is Obidei Olariwaju. Thank you for staying with us still, Obidei. Thank you very much. Now, let me go back on Tuesday when the president made that comment, and you heard it, many Nigerians heard it. What was your reaction to the president's comment? Um, funny enough, for those who know me, uh, I'm very um, sympathetic with the president, but... Um, he goffed by saying that. Um, the, I mean, he's the father of the country. And um, one thing the father of the country must always be sensitive about is um, managing words in such a way that um, you don't um, hurt the feeling of the others. Uh, most of the bombings we've i i don't want to i i am someone who is very sensitive talking about um religion because i've come to realize that uh, religion and ethnicity is never going to help us to realize the nigerian dream uh, so i'm always sensitive about it so but then i would just say what the president said was not what a president should say and now the U.S. government is calling on Nigeria, the federal government, to make sure it protects the life and properties of its citizenry. How do you react to this? It's, um, it's an insult on Nigeria, brought upon us by our leaders. I mean, if, um, if I would have to tell you, protect your family, yeah. protect your wife, protect your son, it means, protect your daughter. It means I failed or it's, I'm failing. It's, it's, it shows your failing. On my responsibility. Uh, yeah, so um, it's, um, I feel embarrassed that we, ha we have to wait till the international community is telling us to, uh, our leaders to protect us. And um, unfortunately, I am yet to get the reaction to that. Uh, but of course, the citizens are, are not well protected. The, the security situation in the country is too worrisome. It's way, way too worrisome. Now, the, the, the major brawl here now, we have two bodies, two religious bodies now in contention with each other over that comment, the NSCIA and the Christian Association of, of Nigeria can over this comment made by the president. Um, what is critical, these two bodies? Because at the end of the day, we can't deny the fact that our politics has always been drawn, you rightly said it a moment ago, but be, be, between the lines of religion and ethnicity. Um, what is, what uh, is, what uh, is, what is uh, important uh, for these two bodies right now? I won't, I won't blame either of the bodies, mm. the president brought about us and um, it would be it will be inhuman of Khan not to respond and then it would be s senseless of um, the Islamic body as well yes not to give you a counter response I would put all the blame on the president and um, his advisors because that's not something that ought to have come out at all from the president. Uh, the two bodies, I mean, you're hurting, and I'm coming to tell you, I mean, this pain is, is not much. The Yorubas will say, Mumora now. That's what you need is consolation. We need um, suiting words mm. to heal our country. We should, um, as much as possible, be very, very sensitive about our utterances in such a way that it never brings about um, further argument. You know, there's, there are statements you would utter that will bring about um, reconciliation. Okay. And there are statements that you would utter that would, okay, let the war continue. Which we maybe want to ask you now that you said a statement utter that could bring about comfort um, and reconciliation and statement order that could just light up or make, make a mountain out of a molehill. Do you think the president's comment is capable of provocation? The comment made by already, the president? Already it's um, causing provocation. I would want to refer to the can walk uh, that, um, I mean, the last Sunday walk. By Contextually, Redeem. do you think it was taken out of context? What the it's president not. meant? 
it's it's not taken out of context. Mm. I mean, uh, I am uh, I studied communication yes. as an undergraduate, and you know, communication is never complete until the sender, who is the encoder, gets sent out the same meaning. I mean, the receiver gets the same meaning yeah. as um. So the fact that there's this parity in understanding of the statement, it means it's it's not well channeled. I was talking about um, what Pastor Adeboye did on Sunday. Okay. Uh, they called it a prayer walk. It was a kind of protest, but it could not have been labeled as a protest. You understand what I'm saying? It was a call for reconciliation. It was not a call to defend the Christians or the Muslims. It was a call to defend Nigerians. And that's what leadership should really, really be about. Yes. I mean, a leader should not say things that, um, I mean, it's just like you have two children. They bring a, a case to you. And in your statement, you already take, it seems you're taking side with the other. Already you've created mistrust in the other, in the other child's yeah. arm. Great. Talking about mistrust, um, let's go back to a few comments also attributed to the Christian Association of Nigeria Khan saying um, those at the top when it comes to security and administration of President Mahmoud Bari are all nothing else. And they express concern about that. I mean, everybody in security positions in this administration seems to come from the north. Um, people have called for the resignation of the service chiefs, reshuffling, and even for the resignation of the president himself. Uh, do, you, do you subscribe to their, to, their, to their calls, to their opinions on of, this? Of course, I, I subscribe to their opinion on this. Um, Nigeria is a multi-ethnic um, country. Yeah. And um, for fairness to be seen, there must be balance. Uh, in a situation where all the security chiefs are from a part of the country. I don't think that speaks well. Yeah, but he did um, say he was going to work with people he trusts. And he's, yesterday he's on the show, to, I did say no, to my guests, the, 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 the bottom line remains, yeah. he worked, he's working with people he trusts. Yes. His votes was not only from the nuts. His votes was from every part of the country. And the funny thing is he did not win the vote from other parts of the country because those in that part of the country knows him in total. Mm. It's because some people sold him. So if he could trust those people at that point to get votes for him, he should also be able to trust them to nominate. I mean, you know, and um, whether we like it or not, <clears throat> government is a continuum. It's a continuity. This um, people, we have intelligence. I don't want to believe our intelligence is so poor. Of course, uh, as the president, you need to work with people you can trust. But then there's what we call balance. You, you could work with 70% of people you trust. Or like they'll call it the quota system. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't want to even talk about the quota system. Okay. Now. Work with 70% of the people you trust. President Buhari is a Nigerian who has operated across the length and breadth of Nigeria. He has worked with Yorubas, he had worked with Igbos, and I want to believe he had picked friends, even in the military circle, from way back. I mean, it's um, saying that um, he only wants to work with people he trusts, and all those people are from the north. It's, um, it, it's something that should give the other Part okay. of the country. Okay, but recently we, we've seen a rise in the spate of kidnapping, banditry, and killings um, by the Boko Haram insurgents and in places like Zamfara, Kastina State, Niger, you know, particularly. Now, do you think our government has gone into a place where they're helpless or they've become so desensitized to, to the security issues of the country? Are they helpless? Uh, one of the magazines that brought me fine life is um, I would always tell myself. It's not as bad as it seems. It's as bad as I see it. Uh, the government is never helpless. It's just about um, taking decisive decision. Uh, when I talk about decisive decision, I hire you to do something for me. You're not doing it. I fire you. I get someone else to do it. Uh, the the for the for anything happening in the country, the blame or the hapless comes totally back to the president. And now that the whole country is um, groaning in pain, it's, it, the onus is on the president to review 
the president and the presidency now to review how did we get here. There's always what we call the SWOT analysis. You understand? Yes. Let's go back to our table. Let's see our strength. Let's see our weakness. Let's see the opportunities and the threats. And then we reshuffle things. And then um, we get a balance again. So it's, it's, I mean, the only reason it's going to be helpless is because, oh, that's all we have. We don't have any other thing to do. But I believe there's still so much that can be done. All right. Now, the NSCIA has called on the federal government to declare a state of emergency on our security. Do you think we're there yet? Yes, we're there. Is this paramount? Yes, we're there. Okay. Uh, let me make you laugh. And this type of person, one of my hobbies is I, I can just uh, get in my car, I leave home, and I drive. In one of such driving, I've met myself in Oshobu from Lagos. I've met myself in Ekiti from Lagos. I mean, you know, that's because um, the roads are safe. But now, anywhere beyond Ibado and Shagam, I'm very scared of driving. So, yes. It's, 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 uh, I mean, the security situation needs to be. And, and what is paramount for the federal government at this point in time with the emergence of the, the regional security outfit and uh, service chiefs not. Let's leave politics aside. Power. Let's yes. leave politics aside. Let the federal government give all support to this regional security outfit. Um, let's due process be followed and let all Nigerians feel safe. If the police has failed me as a Nigerian and I feel Amotekun can protect me, let me test the veracity of Amotekun. If Amotekun fails me, don't forget, I would also shout. Mm. I would also cry. So at this point, we just need to explore every, um, every angle that we feel could um, bring solution to the table. Mm. Do you think we're going to get to a point where the average man can't no longer step outside and feel safe. I mean, many will say we're there already. Uh, what, is, what is critical for every Nigerian out there at this point in time, being our brother's keeper? I believe we won't get there. And the reason we won't get there is because um, we are talking. I'm talking, you're talking. So we won't get there. And um, one of the reasons why we won't get there is why all this... Um, regional security outfits are coming okay. uh, and I also pray we won't get there uh, it's it's about decision as much as I would always say I pray I pray I know that um, prayer without um, action is not so it's it's um, it's a decision that everybody should applaud one thing I have come to realize though is um, the popular opinion most times it's never the right opinion mm -hmm. because it's always uh, battered based on emotions and all that. But then uh, opinion leaders, um, personal opinion leaders and the media especially should do well in sensitizing because there are some decisions that might come up that seems uh, hard. We should always um, find a way to criticize fairly. If you notice, that's one thing I try to do. I don't want to condemn, but I want to criticize fairly. I want to see, I want to give you your praises and I want to give you your blames. Mm. So we should, as a, as a, unfortunately, the leaders among the populace are always few. Yes. So for the, for those who happens to be in that role of leadership, we should um, always put Nigeria first. All right, you just rightly said when you were speaking a moment ago how the, the part of the road, some places you can't travel to, you don't feel safe traveling to. Uh, what comes to mind readily is the Abuja Kaduna Expressway where there have been a whole lot of kidnapping and killings, dead bodies found on, on the road. Um, the administration of Mohamed Bari came on the mantra of security. First, we're going to rescue the, the abducted Chibo girls, um, now Dachi girls, and we still have a whole lot of girls still unaccounted for. What is very pivotal for the government to do to put in place on our major roads, on our major highways and express to make commuters feel safe? Because I, I know a lot of people live down in the north Abuja Kaduna. The road is not an option for them to go by any longer. First and foremost, um, the policing system has not failed, but it's not enough. I wouldn't say they failed because in a situation where you have one person security. Increased checkpoints? Is, is, that, is, that one, is that one of the solutions? No, not checkpoint now. Okay. Not checkpoint. 
So, um, community policing, we still have to come back to that. Um, I mean, the federal government might not be able to recruit um, one person to two or three people. But if the federal government can recruit one person to ten people, and the state government can support with another one person, mm. and then the local government can support with another one person, we are getting there gradually. I mean, all these roads, all these places where these kidnappings are happening, with the right resources, we have a young man that can dare them, that can face them fire for fire, with the right training. You understand what I'm saying? And, um, you know, it's in, in, in other clan, it's, it's, it's a thing of joy to die for your country because you know you, you, you are a hero. Only that in this part of the world, it's not. I, you know, while I was way much younger, I used to say I can die for my country. I can, don't can think you I'll, still die for uh, your um, country now? Um, if if um, my death would have just been a wasted death, so I wouldn't want to die for my country now. But if the system, if everything is um, right, if, if uh, the, the variables is correct, you know, in a situation where I die for my country and then my generations to come, four, five generations to come, they can always point back to their dad that, yeah that, that that's my father that's my father but unfortunately that's not the case here so community policing i think is the solution to that because all those places where these kidnaps kidnappings are happening if uh, this community police this um um uh, regional security outfits are well empowered yes. they can manage those places it's their territory but the it's concern is also um like the Amot Sekum, it was clearly said they won't be moving around with arms. So how much of security can one provide when you don't have when you're not armed? They won't be moving around with arms. Mm. That's what's said. But I want to believe. That's why I said for anything to be achieved, we must always um look forward to balance in the situation. Okay. There's no need moving around with hams on my streets as an atmotekun. Yeah, but the, the, crime, the crimes are committed on your streets. On my streets, yes. on my street. Because on my street, you can easily apprehend the person. Well, it would be wrong for you to go into the bush where you know these guys have all the magnums, the AK 47s oh, without no. ammunition. So that's where the balance comes in. I mean, once this is put into consideration, it's just like we have the police, we have the anti-bomb squad, we have the small criminal, we have the, you know? Yes. So all those things should just be put into... All right. Oh, big day, Larry Wadji. Thank you very much for your contributions on Plus Politics tonight. Thank and you. thank you for staying with us. We'll take our Plus Report now, and when we return, I'll be giving you my take. Stay with us. The Nigerian Senate has given some federal ministries, departments and agencies a two-week window period to appear before the Senate Committee on Local and Foreign Debt to defend President Mohamedou Buhari's $29.9 million loan request. The President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, made this known in Abuja following a motion raised by Senator Clifford Orji on the floor of the Senate. The Senator faulted the failure of some ministries, departments and agencies to appear before the Senate Committee to defend defend their proposed allocation of monies for projects under their supervision. It will stress you, Mr. President and distinguished colleagues, that out of the 18 beneficiary ministries, only eight has appeared before the committee. And I think it is important at this point to stress this point, because approving a loan of over $22 billion is a very serious uh, matter. And we think we need a very, some serious explanation for the ministries to enable us to you know, uh, submit uh, our report to the Senate. Maxim, Mr. President, uh, in view of this, uh, this uh, obvious uh, delay in, in the ministries uh, coming to our appearance in our committee, we may need, have to need another two weeks of uh, grace to enable us to submit this, uh, this uh, Make this submission to the Senate. It's not open to debate, but let me advise that this Senate is committed 
to ensuring that such important issues like um, the foreign loan uh, request of the executive needs to be treated with seriousness by both sides. The Senate is making every possible effort to ensure that we, we understand why the request. Therefore, we need details, we need information so that we take uh, the appropriate decisions as quickly as possible. So I will ask those ministries that have not appeared before this committee to do so between now and Monday. So I, I believe that um, this is uh, an advice that will be taken very seriously. It is unequivocally clear that the level of insecurity in the country has reached an unacceptable crescendo that declaring a state of emergency on it appears not only necessary but also pressing. Rather than playing to the gallery as ethnic irresidents and religious bigots will do, Nigerians should rise up to the support of the government to eliminate insecurity. This is a call on the federal government and all its agencies, including the military, to use whatever means possible to arrest this descent into anarchy. Nigeria cannot continue like this with the blood of the innocent being shed unjustly and human security being at its lowest ebb. The situation of Nigeria today is desperate and desperate situations require desperate measures in the collective interest of all many Nigerians. Let the monster of insecurity be tackled actively and proactively with the full weight of Nigeria's security and defense capacity. That's our show for tonight. Thank you for staying with us. Have a great night.